Hi guys, so in this video we are going to go through the Gotham City Grades task where we will be looking at three things. We'll be looking at the average formula, which we should know by now. We're looking at the VLOOKUP formula and we'll be looking again at the IF formula. Let's make it five things. Let's also include graphs and conditional formatting. Bonus! So let's jump right in. All right, so we've already got this template set up for you to have a look at. We've got Gotham City grades. You'll notice some of these characters are from Gotham City. So we're assuming that all these people go to school and they've got two tests to pass the subject and they have to get an average of 50% or higher for both tests. So first thing we want to do is we want to work out the average formula. Now I've already got it in here. So, and the average for this one is 92. So let's work, have a look at what we've got. So we've got equals average bracket C4 to D4 and close bracket. That's pretty standard formula for an average formula. This is C4, obviously. This is D4. We're getting the average of the two numbers that are in there and that's that. So let's just copy that down. So remember we grabbed the uh, little fill drag thing there and we drag that to the end and all the averages pop in there like that. If you want to, you can change the decimal place. You can increase it so they're all the same or decrease it so that they're all that. Um, I think one decimal place might be acceptable. Okay. Right, so now we're going to look at pass or fail. Now, to pass, they need to get 50%. So this has to be 50 or higher. So let's have a look at this formula. Okay, so we've got if, and then we've got open bracket, and then we're looking at E4. This is the, the cell that's in question. Is it greater than or equal to 50? So this is called the logical test. So we put a comma, and then anything after the comma is what do we do in here in this cell in F4 if the logical test is true. So whatever this is will be in here if the formula is true, if the test is true, the logical test. And then a comma, and then anything after this comma will be what happens if this logical test isn't true. What's going to happen in this cell F4 if this logical test is false? And in this case, if it's not greater than or equal to 50, it's a fail. Then we close brackets and then we hit enter. All right, so then we copy that formula down. We only need to type it in the one time. And there we go, we've got passes and fails. Now you'll notice here, something else special has happened here. We've got fail showing up in red, red writing, red background. And that's to alert the teacher, I suppose, that we've got a problem. We've got Edward, we've got Bain, and we've got Barbara not passing the test or not passing the average require requirement for this subject. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, what we do is we would highlight the cells here and we go up to data, no we don't, we go up to format and we go to conditional formatting. You may have come across this before. We select conditional formatting and all the way over here, we've got all of our conditional format rules. And at the moment we have one there. When you set this up, there probably won't be any there. So you can add a rule or you can look at an existing rule. So I'll just click on that. And you'll see here that first thing is apply to range. So what is the range that this rule will apply to? So it's only these selected cells here that this rule applies. And what is the rule? So the rule is we're going to format those cells if something happens. And we've got a whole heap of things that it could do. So if text in that cell contains the letter F for fail, or I could put A-I-L, if the text contains the word fail, or F as I had before, then we're going to format the style of that cell to be this. And we can change all that here. So that's there. 
Um, we could add an, another rule so that, oh, look at that. It's decided that the default is to format those cells if they're not empty. That's the standard, that's the generic. Format cells if they're not empty to green. We don't really want that. So we could go text starts with the P. That's a good one. And then we can make that green and then we click done. So that's that done. Okay. Then we've got the last part. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you thought that bit was tricky, get settled in. We are going to get excited with this. Actually, we've still got this chart to do. How do we establish what grade to get? Well, this little VLOOKUP table determines what grade they get based on their score or their average score. So the way it works is, this is American, okay, because it's Gotham City. So zero is an F. 50% or 50 is an E. 55 is an E plus. 60 is a D and so on. You might be saying, thinking to yourself, hang on a second. What about all the numbers in between? Well, if you set it up in this particular way, in ascending order, anything above zero all the way up to 50 will give the result of F. Anything above 50 all the way to 55 will give you an E. 55 to 60, or 55 to 59.99 will be an E plus. 60 onwards to 65 will be a D and so on, right up to 95 anything 95 and above is an A plus okay so that's how that works so then over here we need to have a look at this formula V lookup stands for vertical lookup and it's looking at a vertical lookup table okay so let's look at it so we go V lookup open bracket so we're looking at this cell we want to compare the contents of this cell or the value in this cell to our table sitting over here our VLOOKUP table. So first thing is we type in E4, then we put a comma, a bit like the if formula, we put a comma. Then this section, we need to put in the array of the VLOOKUP table. We're going from Q3 in this corner to R, what is it, R13 in that corner. And that includes the whole array. Now you might be noticing here, what is going on with these dollar signs? What are the dollar signs for? Well, the dollar signs have nothing to do with money. They are just there to make sure that the Q and the 3 and the R and the 13 don't change when we copy that formula down. So if I were to copy that just down to the next one, we've got an F here, you'll notice that Q3 and R13 are still the same. They haven't changed, but this one's changed. This one's changed to E5. Normally when you copy down a formula, all the cell references will change with it. For example, you look at these. This is C4 to D4. This is C5 to D5. This is C6 to D6. We want those formulas to change. We want those cell references to change they are called relative cell references. These ones we don't want to change. These ones we do, yes. This one we don't want to change. Why? Because we always want to be referring to this particular table. We don't want that table to change its location or our reference to it anyway. So the dollar signs just fix in place the Q and the 3 and the R and the 13. That's all they do. And this is called an absolute cell reference. So the E4 is a, is a relative cell reference, and this one is called an absolute cell reference. It absolutely won't change no matter where you copy the formula to. All right? So we have put in the VLOOKUP. We've referred to the 92 with E4. We've put in the table array, and now what's this number two about? The number two is all about which column one or two, do we want to get our result to go back into the cell? So it's the second column. Some VLOOKUP tables can have more than two columns. You can have three or four columns, whatever. So we just put a number two, and this is called, I think, a, a column index number or something like that. I do have another video all about VLOOKUP. 
So anyway, so that's the formula. Let's now copy it down all the way. And there is our set of results. We want to make a graph of the students and their average score. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the title of the column name and we're going to hold down the command key on my Mac or if you're using a Windows machine you would hold down the control key and highlight those as well because that's the data that we want to include in our chart. You only highlight the data that you want to put into your chart when creating a chart. So then we go insert chart and there it is. And the heading is average versus name. Not a great name. So we'll change that to average scores for students. That's a meaningful title that means something. We've got name at the bottom, that's good. We've got average on the side, that's good. If you want to change the colors, why not? You can make them whatever you want them to be. We can put that in its place. We can resize that. Oops, okay, let's do that. Yes, it is. Just resize that to fit the space. Or you could click on data labels. You can show the scores. There's other things you can do, but that will do for now. All right, one more thing. Average is sitting down here. We want to get an average of the class test scores. So what's the average for test one? Notice here it's giving us a suggestion. It's looking at the available data on, that we've already put in and it's guessing that we want to put in this formula. It actually happens to be true, so we don't need to type it. That's nice. Enter. I don't like all those decimal places, so I'm just going to fix that up. One decimal place, maybe. Nah, let's just get rid of that. And to make it stand out or differentiate, let's bold that and that's fine. We want to do the same here. Do we need to type that again? No, we can just copy that formula across. Do we want to get the average of the average? Yes. I think it would look better to have a line here as well, just to help distinguish everything from everything. In fact, why not go one step further and put a line there as well. We could even go one step further again and just put in a little bit of a shading there just to distinguish the headings from the body of the spreadsheet so there you have it i hope you found that nice and simple and not too crazy not too difficult but hey if you didn't quite get it why not just delete everything and try again why not um, so thanks for sticking to the end of the video and have a great day bye Silly ending.